See, punch doesn't land, dude. Look at that. That punch does not land, dude. It does not land. And so all you guys who do these conspiracy videos where, you know, the, the punch didn't land, there you go. There's your clip. Man, what an eventful night. This is going to be a unique video because uh, obviously I'm sure everybody saw the Jake Paul and Nate Diaz fight. But if you haven't uh, seen a lot of people who were there talk about it, I know there's been a few people. It's going to be a whole different ballgame because I have a bunch of videos I'll show you guys from the event live. I got like people brawling after the fight. I got the Nate Diaz knocked down from my seats. I got, dude, and so much stuff happened. People in my crew almost got beat up by Kevin Holland. And then also, and like for real, like Kevin Holland was going to roll two guys that were in my group. And then also one of the guys in my group almost got killed by maybe the most unhinged, dangerous guy who has ever fought in one of the main MMA organizations. I'm not going to tell you who it is yet because the story is so much better if you don't know who it is until we get there because the guy who it was had no idea who he was. Has no idea what kind of danger he was playing with and it's hilarious. So I'll tell you guys all of that. But we're going to talk about the Nate Diaz fight, the Jake Paul fight, like the the Nate Diaz phenomenon, the Jake Paul phenomenon, all of it, dude. Like I've got to... This is going to be a good video, man. I'm just going to tell you that right now. And I'll tell you about the weekend because we were there all uh, we were there all weekend. We were at Fighter Hotel. We hung out with all kinds of amazing people. And I mean, this is just, this is one of, this was the best weekend that we've ever done. You know, I host groups, people who are fans of the channel. Um, you know, I, I get these big groups. I buy these huge blocks of tickets and then, uh, and then we host. We all hang out on Friday night. Then we go out and then we do, you know, Saturday we go to the fights. And this was the best one ever by a long shot. We had so much fun and the event itself was so fun was so fun I got to hang out with Chael for the first time in person we hung out at the pool for a couple hours yesterday and then I mean just to illustrate like how sick the event was I texted him during the event I was like this is the best live event I've ever been to in my life like it's just it was that good dude but uh yeah so we also I'm, I'm gonna talk about uh people are saying that the fight is rigged you know, I'm going to start there actually, because a lot of people are saying the fight is rigged and it's like, are you serious? I mean, maybe, you know, maybe I have a, I have a video of the knockdown. And if we look really closely, maybe it looks like it's rigged because I'm going to show you right now on the comment section. When I posted it on, on the gram, it is like 80% people being like, it's rigged fights rigged. And I've heard people saying rigged in like a bunch of different directions too. Like I've actually heard, well, two, two different opinions on like, like they think it's rigged, but rigged in a different way. And I'm going to comment on that. And uh, what else are we going to talk about? I'm talking about Nate choking him out. The Drake, the Drake curse. Uh, so we're going to talk about all of that stuff. Uh, and I appreciate you guys subscribing to the channel. If you haven't yet, I'm sorry. I'm a little, I'm tired, but I'm still super fired up. So but yeah, man, uh, if you watch my content and you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. I would appreciate it. And uh, we'll rock and roll, dude. We will rock and roll. All right, so I'm going to start with the rigged thing. So watch this. Okay, let's just start right there. Start with the fight is rigged. And I just want to show you like how, how much I was seeing this. All right. And this is, uh, this, was my, this is my video. I took this video. So just like, you know, this is... Uh, Yep, I took that video. And then also, like, just so, you know, just so that we can, hang on, let me pull this up. And then, boo, wait, hang on, doop, there's the original video. <laughs> so this is before I, before I posted it. Here's like the, you can see it a little bit better. See, I, like, and one thing I, I will say, I do understand how from this angle, it looks like the punch didn't land, watch right it looks like the punch did not land i will totally acknowledge that look at here Ooh. it looks like it completely misses right matter of fact i'm gonna be honest with you guys this is one time i am going to do this all right i'm probably gonna clip this and put it at the front in slow-mo where it's like look the punch doesn't even land see punch doesn't land dude look at that that punch does not land, dude. It does not land. And so all you guys who do these conspiracy videos where, you know, the, the punch didn't land, there you go. There's your clip. 
Now, in reality, the punch 100% did land. Uh, 100% landed. Because from the other angle, it's a temple shot. It's a check hook that just clips him right on the temple. And then that's why he lost his equilibrium. And he, uh, and he recovered really quick. But just look. I mean, I'm serious. Just look at the volume of comments that say rigged. Dude, like, honestly, I'm going to do this. Rigged. Boop. He didn't even hit him. What is this rigged Palooka fight? Wake up, bums. It's rigged. Uh, rigged fight. Just right there. So just right there. Now let's scroll here. Let's try it again. Oh, I got to expand the comments. But anyway, bottom line is I saw this all over the place. Rigged, 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 rigged. Okay. And so one of my buddies who I talked to he told me that it's rigged because Jake could have knocked out Nate Diaz any time that he wanted and he stretched the fight out to keep it entertaining and then so there could be a rematch. He's like, he could have knocked him out any time he wanted. He just, you know, he just strung him along, man. And then the other guys are saying, oh, yeah, you know, Jake took, or uh, Nate took a dive. Nate took a dive. Dude. They, okay. That is so ludicrous. Okay. It's, it's so laughably not true. And so objectively easy for anyone who knows what they're looking at to know that this is not rigged in any capacity. But that, I mean, first of all, what would indicate that a person can knock out Nate Diaz at any time? His history of being knocked out zero times, except for when he got kicked in the face by Josh Thompson. He's never been knocked out by a punch ever. How on earth could he, is he stretching it out on purpose? That makes no sense. And on the other side of the conversation... If, if Nate was going to take a dive, why wouldn't he take a dive? Why would he grind Jake in a dogfight for 10 straight rounds? It's so stupid. It's like, it makes no sense. If he's going to take a dive, he's going to take a dive, you know? And the thing is like, so and this brings me to the, to the seasoned viewer, which I, I know most, well, I don't know, like for this video, I know most of the people, you guys who watch my content consistently, you guys are like me, like us. You know what you're looking at. This is not going to be educational for you, but this is a Jake Paul fight. So there's going to be a lot of viewers who are not real. Like they're not like real fights fans. And they certainly don't have a, a whole lot of, if any experience being in there to experience the exact phenomenon that I am going to lay out right now. And by the way, by the way, what was my prediction for this fight? What was my prediction for this fight? If I didn't say it on the video, I can tell you right now that Chael will testify and tell you exactly what my prediction was in the pool Saturday, yesterday, verbatim. I said, Jake's going to win by decision because Jake is going to win the early rounds. Nate is just going to be able to, just going to be trying to tire him out, tire him out, tire him out. But then by the time Jake slows down a little bit and Nate starts picking up rounds, it's going to be too late. And, uh, and Jake's going to win a decision. And boom, literally exactly what I said was going to happen. But, uh, but anyway, so speaking of that, exact thing so to a trained eye all of you guys know that there is this different thing that's happening besides just who's getting punched and how hard and how often right to us to someone who's actually watched a million fights or been in there with someone who's trying to hurt you in a sanctioned bout of some kind and felt what it's like to be gassed we all know that even though jake's landing the more significant punches is like but that's they are fighting against each other's gas tanks right now, you know? And so to us, you start seeing Jake slow down. Like after the second round and Jake took a big deep breath, we already, we were like, he's tired already. He's tired already. Because we know like the, it's like the same as uh, a casual fan would see a really heavy punch land and the guy gets stunned and they're like, he's hurt. To us, right? To our crew, we see a guy tired. It's exactly the same thing. We're like, he's tired. Because that means he's likely to get finished if he keeps on going that direction, getting tired. Now, so to, uh, we're all watching this gas tank thing. And so for us, the fight was super exciting, dude. I thought this fight was incredible. Like, Jake's a dog, man. People were talking about, oh, Jake Paul's a blah, 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 blah. It's like, dude, he's a dog, man. Nate made it, made it sloppy, made it dirty, got all in his face and just made him wear him, dude. And, you you know, whether he's punching him hard or not, it's the energy that it takes, and he is landing punches. You know what I mean? 
And so, and Jake, dude, he did not get gassed. He, you know, he takes the takes a break at the end of the round, and he comes out with you know revived energy. That's the sh- that's the sign of someone who is in really good cardio shape. I mean, seriously, put some respect on this guy's name, man. I've been listening to, uh, and so that's kind of that's my take on why casuals versus like you know seasoned viewers were seeing this thing so differently. So what else? Though I want to like I want to make sure I hit all of these things uh, before, like, because I'm going to tell you guys some stories from the from the so these stories from the weekend. But I want to make sure I hit all these first. Oh, one thing I did want to say. So you know, Drake supposedly bet I don't know two hundred fifty thousand dollars on Nate, and Nate lost. And then they're like, dude, you're part of the Drake curse. Every time Drake puts one of these big bets on a fighter, he loses. For the hundredth time on this channel, Drake is not betting shit on these fights. He might be betting, but he sure as hell ain't betting 250000 He's not betting $2 million on Izzy. Those are advertisements for steak, okay? Steak is always the betting site where he is betting on. That's all those are. It is a genius way to make something go viral. Oh, my God. Drake, Here's Drake's bet slip for $2 million on Izzy, and everyone shares it all over the place, and it's like, bet on steak. It's an advertisement. He is not making those bets. Oh, he's part of the Drake curse. If he's part of the Drake curse, and what that means is you're cursed because Drake put you in his commercial. He did not actually bet $2 million on you or two or whatever. It's like, come on, dude. Come on. So, um, and also it's interesting that they always make the bet like some very visible bet that they want everyone else to come and take too. You know? Yeah, I bet I bet on Nate Diaz. So anyway, that's... Uh, that's that part. Now, I am going... Oh, I also just want to say, like, UFC did their best job uh, trying to sabotage this event, too. You know, they put a great uh, they put a great fight card on, you know, in competition with them, but that fight card was obviously done uh, before the main event started. But, you know, they were originally going to have Umar Namagamadoff and, and Cody, uh, Corey Sanhagen, which is a crazy, crazy fight, but, you know, ends up uh, Rob Font, which is a big step down, honestly, in terms of how excited I was for the fight, but... But then right after the fight, they announced Strickland versus Israel Adesanya at 293. So, I mean, if you think that there's a mistake, you know, like, if you think that this was not planned, you're crazy. You know, you're crazy. Strickland goes public. Now that Strickland's like, hey, they don't want that fight. Planned, I bet. I would bet you it's planned. I would bet you. Not for sure, though. Not 100% for sure. It's possible that Izzy, Izzy talked the UFC into it. He was like, dude, I need, a, I need an opponent. I don't care about Drickus. I'm going to beat Sean Strickland. He's very persuasive. It's possible. But anyway, I thought that was interesting. Now, let me tell you guys some, uh, some stories from last night. Oh, the, okay. So we had, this is uh, just like a picture of our section. So we had three different sections. Um, and one was... We were at the front row of 215, which is like on the second deck. And so you got look down in to the octagon. Then we had a front row of section 120, which is right, like the lower section. And so like, this is, this is the view from these seats. Too. You know, not bad, dude. Not bad. That is my complaint about seats like this though, is, is I feel like there's always something obstructing my view. Like even over here where it looks really clear, you still have the ropes in the way, dude. That's why I like, I like sitting in the, in the elevated ones, you know, like I actually prefer that because then you don't get obstructed by the, by the ropes, but these seats were obviously awesome. Uh, and then we also had floor seats, um, which were sixth row. Um, we had this fight. Now this fight, Check this out. So I'm just going to go through this like this because I can't really show it. But this fight was after on the street. I can't show it because this this will get demonetized. But I am going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the members only section. So uh, members, you guys will get to see this fight. That this we recorded this ourselves. Um, so you can check that out in the members only. And what else we got, dude? What else do we have? Oh, that's us in uh, section 120, Melissa and uh, Xavier. And then we got this one. This is Connor, one of the guys who was on the trip. We have a, dude, we have a, uh, we have this time, like, uh, we had a camera guy who who I gave a ticket to uh, named Marcos who followed us around. And so he was like, he's like, we're going to have this like incredible like vlog of the entire weekend because he's following us everywhere. And uh, yeah, I'm so excited for that. And, and uh, you know, obviously this is me and Gabrielle at the pool. But one thing, 
one thing that happened, oh, there's us the first night, some of us, we had a huge crew. So check this out. So it was me and Chael at the pool. So, dude, actually, let me tell you, the. I'll, I'll tell you about this because this is one of the most badass stories ever. So, uh, well, first of all, we had no idea. Like, I, I talked to Chael on the way down. Uh, Gabrielle and I talked to him and uh, him and Thero were, they were already at the hotel. And, I, you know, it was just kind of like, all right, you know, we'll see when, you know, if you're around. And then he was at the, we were at the pool. He came to the pool yesterday. And as he gets there, and then me and some of the other people from our group are, are all hanging out, rapping out with him. Then the camera dude gets there. And so, like, he got, got all of this footage of me and like Gabrielle and our crew all hanging out with Chael at the pool. He had like a drone like flying over. So like, it's, it's like complete and total happenstance that, uh, that we captured that, that time, but it was awesome. Chael's such a good dude, man. He was so nice to all the people that were, that were with us. And he was with his son, you know, he took, uh, he took his son Thero to the, this was like his first really, really big event. And, uh, you know, one thing I will say as, as a person who has kids, obviously, and has been in a lot of these situations, cause Gabrielle and I, we bring our kids everywhere. Like that's, we never really like let having kids interrupt our life. You know, like they just either come with us or we get sitters or whatever. We basically just do what we always did. But he's at, you know, Chael is, is at the, at the pool at fighter hotel at the W on a fight night. And he's got Thero with him and he's, it's the only kid out there, right? Thero's the only kid there. Now I've been in those situations, dude. And you could tell a lot about a kid by how they behave in a situation like that where they're with one parent and there's a lot of other, you know, adults around who are all interacting with your parent. It's a lot of kids will will like spaz out. They'll throw a temper tantrum to try to get attention or they'll do, you know, they'll they'll misbehave. Thero is a good kid, dude. And I mean that. Like that's like a it, it, the way he handled being there where his dad was like kind of occupied with a bunch of people who wanted to talk to him and he's being really gracious and talking to everybody and how Thero handled that like is I'm a, I you know I know whatever about fighting I know a lot about kids man I have three of them and uh yeah he's a great kid man he's a great kid lucky kid Chael's his dad so check this out I don't care I don't even care if Chael's bad about this because I think this is the most gangster story ever dude so Chael's there with his kid Thero at the hotel. He tells him that he's going to take him to the pool. Upon getting ready to go to the pool, realizes he forgot his trunks. So what's he going to do? Is he going to disappoint his kid? And be like, look, man, I got no trunks. Nope. Chael Sonnen, every single person at this entire hotel obviously knows who he is, goes to the pool and just strips to his underwear and fucking gets in the pool in his underwear to make sure that his kid, uh, you know, gets to swim in the pool and hang out. And not only does he, he doesn't even sneak it. He just tells us, he's like, yeah, I'm just in my underwear because I didn't have any trunks. And I was like, that's so gangster, dude. You know, it's so much better than, oh, well, I can't, you know, I have to go get some trunks, you know, delay the whole thing. It's like, I'll just go in my underwear, dude. The fuck's anybody going to say to me, huh? Nothing. So he's a good dad and confirmed just as cool in person as, uh, as you would expect. I will tell you the two stories of people almost getting killed in my crew, okay? So the first one, the first one is Kevin Holland, right? So Kevin Holland almost killed a dude in our crew apparently. So apparently they rolled up on, on Kevin Holland and they were like, Kevin! And they like kind of grabbed his shoulder. You know, like they like grabbed his shoulder. And he did not like being grabbed. And apparently he had actually, he had told a couple other people earlier in the night, like, don't like not to touch him. I can't remember exactly what he said, but all the people were like, dude, he was about to beat these guys up. Like he yelled at him, like, don't, don't put your fucking hands on me. And I understand, dude, honestly, people don't like to be touched, dude. People don't like to be touched. And if you actually think about, uh, I mean, if you think about the, the video where, you know, like the kid oil checked him or whatever, and he got mad, it's like, this is a common theme, dude. You know, like I've no one's ever told, no one's ever said, oh, you know, I, I just said hi to Kevin Hall and he was a prick. It seems like it is a consistent thing. Like, dude, don't touch him. <laughs> you know, like I think the takeaway is don't roll up and just grab him. You know, he doesn't like it, which is a, that doesn't seem like an unreasonable thing, but he did almost beat the shit out of a couple guys in my group because they went up and they were too friendly and grabbed him. But, uh, 
but he said something like the and I, I did not see this so I can't I can't attest to whether or not this is true but the a couple of people told us that he was like man I'm just here trying to be low key and I'm like and I had and I had seen him already and he unless I'm mistaken he had this necklace on and another one like he was like let's just say like his neckwear was definitely not low key <laughs> that's the only reason it was funny I was like I mean because he's he was uh he was blinging last night let's just put it like that but again, if you see Kevin Holland in person, don't grab him, dude. If you don't know him, don't grab him. He does not like it. Seems like uh, a pretty straightforward approach. But nonetheless, just a, just fair warning in case he uh, is not as nice to you as he was to our people who he obviously could dismantle if he wanted to. Now, let me tell you the really crazy story, though. Okay, so check this story out. So in the floor seats that we had, right? Like, so we had a whole, I think uh, we had eight seats in the sixth row. Um, And so our seats end and we got a buddy uh, of mine, Yusefa, and uh, he's, he's on the end, right? So Gabrielle and I came and we were hanging out in the floor seats for a little while. And they're like, dude, you should have seen this guy who was just here right before this. Actually, I need to pull up a picture. They're like, this this will be so much better if I do it like this. So they're like, dude, there was this guy right here who was like sitting in the seats. He's completely insane. And they're like, he was screaming at the top of his lungs at these girls because it was a girl fight right before. Get these stupid bitches out of here. He's all, man, she could put it in your vagina. Like the most outlandish super inappropriate shit and like the security came over with all dude you need to be quiet man they're like you can't be doing that he's all man i I paid for my seat i do what i want man do what i want man like just totally insane making every single person in the entire section super uncomfortable and apparently uzefa was like he said to his buddy he's like he's like man i'm gonna tell this guy to shut the fuck up right so when we're hearing the story we're hearing it from his buddy he's like yeah man this guy was nuts he's like uzefa was about to Tell him to shut the fuck up, man. And he's like, do you know him? It's this guy. And look at the picture that he showed us, dude. And just try to imagine what would have happened if Yuzefa would have told him to shut the fuck up. It was crazy horse, dude. It was crazy horse Bennett, dude. Sitting right next to him. I have no idea how he got tickets in the sixth row, dude. Like, apparently, uh, he said that the guy who got him the tickets is some guy who works for UFC or something, but like, I don't know, man. What person would get that guy floor seats and be like, yeah, I did that. You know, they're like, you know, someone's like, when he does shit like this, he never came back. Like when the security did take him out and he never came back. As far as I know. And but there was like, dude, there was like weed all over the floor. Like he was like rolling a blunt up there, you know, like rolling a blunt and screaming at the chicks. So inappropriate that they basically threw him out. But like, uh. Who wants to be responsible for that? They're like, Jesus, you guys see Crazy Horse Bennett? They're all, who the fuck gave that guy floor seats? Oh, I did that, dude. I mean, listen, man, he's a former fighter. You're all, he's a current crackhead. He's a current, legitimate, full throttle crackhead. That's what he is. He's a crackhead. But also, to your point, a fighter where if the guy sitting next to him is like, hey, man, you're being disrespectful to women. Why don't you shut the fuck up? He might kill him. That's what I told him. I'm like, dude, he would have fucked you up. If you would have said, shut the fuck up to him, he would have fucked you up. And what's crazy is because you didn't know who he was, he would have been, you You would have been completely over the hill, no chance of even defending yourself before you even realized you were in a fight. You know, like he's completely batshit crazy. He's been arrested a thousand times. So I thought that was hilarious. Uh, another funny thing that happened too, since now we're in story, I mean, I've, Jesus, if you've been watching this long, you must like the, you must like listening to me talk. But another thing that was really funny was, uh, so on Friday night, speaking of Huseffa, so he had a suite at the at uh, Fighter Hotel, which was the W. Now we can tell, we can tell it was the W. Uh, and so we all met there Friday night. Like we got food and we got drinks and whatever, and everybody came there. And so we had, I don't know. I mean, we had 24 people going to the fight and then other people brought other friends, you know, the first night. And, at, you know, in keeping with the, with the norm, at any time I do this, like I was saying, dude, anytime I meet new fans of the channel, they're always roughneck motherfuckers like me, dude. <laughs> it's always these fucking diesel ass guys that I would hang out with anyway, or just like super, it's like, they're, they're just people like me. You know, I just talk to the camera like I'm talking to all my friends, which is, you know, so it's not like super surprising. The kind of people that like my content are people just like my friends. But so 
this, I mean, I will acknowledge that this particular weekend, we had an ill-ass crew, dude. We had some fucking huge diesel-ass motherfuckers, dude. This dude, Aaron from New Orleans, fucking two, I don't know, 225, just Mack truck, had uh, had this, these two dudes from San Diego that were fucking enormous, dude. Ryan and his buddy, huge, dude, huge. Everybody's all tatted up. We had, uh, we had, uh, and then Xavier from fucking Georgia is super big. Ever like, and then Rudy Reyes was there, and Jade Struck. If you guys know who they are, Jade Struck is like she she trained uh, she trained Keanu Reeves for John Wick. She's like one of the most lethal fucking people on earth. So she's there, and Rudy is literally a two hundred and twenty pound piece of absolute brick muscle. And then Jeff, my Navy SEAL friend, is there, and like, uh, and then one of Jake Paul's. Um, main bodyguards is there and he's like six seven or something he's he's huge dude he's a six seven white guy he has tattoos of different guns on each finger he has like a gun 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 so the reason why this is funny right is because Yuzefa had this girl over uh who he had known from like grad school or whatever and they hadn't seen each other in a really long time and she's like she's like she's like like a hippie i think she has on her instagram it's like hippie yuppie or something like that and so when I introduced myself to her, she was, you know, they, she had been there for a while now. And she's like, you know, what's really interesting about this place? She's like, this is like the scariest looking group of people I've ever seen. And I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, I don't know. Everyone's huge. Everyone's all tattooed. They're like, everybody just looks super scary. And yet everyone is so nice. And I was like, yeah, she's like, like, really? Like all, every person here is just so kind. And I was like, yeah, of course. Like it's like blew her mind. You know, because she's just never been around, you know, people like us or whatever. You know, like, so it's like, I don't know. It's funny to think about. It. It's like, you look at this group, you know, you look at Jake Paul's bodyguard. He's like six, eight neck tattoos all the way down, guns on his fingers. And you like, you'd assume, well, this guy probably, you know, wants to just crush someone's skull. And he's just like, hi, man. He's like, how are you? You know, great to meet you guys. You know, everyone. And everyone's like that. Everyone's super nice. But I don't know. It's funny to look at the the room through her eyes and just like, uh. I don't know. Because obviously I take for granted, like, it, unless someone is uh, making very clear that they're not a nice person, I just assume they're a nice person because most people are, you know. But uh, anyway, this is a great weekend, dude. I'm forgetting all kinds of stuff. But uh, I've been talking for 36 minutes, so that's probably long enough. Uh, I love you guys. And um, peace out. <laughs>